EEG and action potentials. What is an EEG? EEG stands for electroencephalograph. This is a method by which the electrical changes in the brain produced when neurons fire are measured using scalp electrodes. Traces are produced of the electrical activity and can be viewed for abnormalities. How does an EEG work? First, let us consider what an action potential is. Brain activity is regulated by neuronal firing, with different s neurons synapsing with others to elicit responses. Neurons consist of a cell body, soma, which has dendi dendritic projections into it, which other neurons can synapse with, as well as an axon which has a selectively permeable membrane. An action potential is the conduction of an, an electrical signal down the axon. Action potentials are generated by sodium and potassium ion movements. At rest, the inside of the axon is at minus 70 millivolts compared to the extracellular matrix. This is maintained by the activity of sodium-potassium ATPase pumps that actively deposit three sodium ions out of the cell for every two potassium ions into the cell. When the nerve fires, the axon rapidly depolarizes and its membrane potential rises to plus 40 millivolts. This happens because the sodium-potassium pumps stop and sodium channels in the membrane open, allowing sodium to enter the axon. If the stimulus does not cause the membrane voltage to rise over the threshold value of minus 55 millivolts, the action potential will not be conducted. This is the all or nothing principle. Following depolarization, the sodium channels shut and potassium channels in the membrane open, allowing rapid repolarization of the axon back to around to minus 70 millivolts. Following repolarization, there is a refractory period when the nerve cannot fire again for a short time. The action potential travels down the axon by depolarization of one area of membrane, causing a flow in a current down the axon, triggering depolarization of the next section. Due to the refractory periods, this means that the action and potential can only flow in one direction. In myelinated nerves, there is saltatory conduction, where the axon is only depolarized at the nodes of Ronvier, thus allowing faster conduction. How does this relate to an EEG? Near the cortical surfaces of the brain are pyramidal nerve cells. When an afferent neuron activates one of these cells by conducting an action potential via a synapse, the dendrite depolarizes. It therefore becomes positively charged due to ion influx, leaving the extracellular space negatively charged. As the action potential flows down the dendrite towards the soma, this creates a current running through the neuron which exits it in a brain area away from the synapse area, creating an area of positively charged extracellular space. There is therefore a dipole in the extracellular space around the dendrite. When a scalp electrode is placed, a negative charge can be detected above the synaptic end of the dendrite. What is measured is this excitatory postsynaptic potential. The detected voltages are tiny for each dendrite. However, due to the densely packed nature of these pyramidal neurons in the brain, each electrode will detect a summation of the electrical signals from many different dendrites in the same area. This occurs because multiple neurons will be activated at the same time, and they will usually have the same orientation. Around 20 plus electrodes are placed on the head using the International 1020 electrode placement system as a basis. An EEG will produce an individual trace for each electrode placed. The normal electrical wave traces produced by an EEG include alpha, beta, theta and delta waves. Different stimuli will produce different wave traces from different brave areas. For example, alpha waves should be detected at the back of the head while you are awake with your eyes shut. One of the main uses of an EEG is to look for epileptic brain activity which can manifest as spike in waves, sharp waves or as unusually slow waves on the EEG trace. An epileptic seizure is characterized as abnormal, excessive or synchronous neuronal activity in the brain. EEGs can be used to help confirm an epilepsy diagnosis as up to 90% of epileptics will show abnormal waveforms in their EEGs between seizures, known as subclinical seizures. However, not all epileptics will have these shown in every EEG. These abnormal waveforms can be induced in a patient by asking them to hyperventilate to reduce blood carbon dioxide levels or to look at a flashing stimulus, or else the patient may be asked not to sleep beforehand as being drowsy can increase the chances of seeing some interictal activity. Non-epileptic seizures can also occur due to psychological rather than neurological conditions, and EEGs can be used to identify these by their lack of epileptic activity in the traces. If an EEG is recorded during an epileptic seizure, the brain will often show large amplitude spike in waves. These waves may occur locally for a few electrode traces or widespread over all of them. 
The pattern of waves produced will vary depending on the type of seizure and whether the seizure is a general one affecting the entire brain or a partial one localised to one cortical lobe. The epicentre of seizure activity may be located deeper in the brain and if so then the EEG may not be able to detect any abnormal activity as the electrodes measure the voltages near the scalp surface. An EEG can also be used to determine the focal centre of a partial seizure, allowing that area of the brain to be localised for surgical treatment of epilepsy. Status epilepticus occurs when there is a recurrent seizing state for over 30 minutes. EEGs can be used to confirm that the seizures are occurring, and as status epilepticus is a life-threatening condition, EEGs are therefore able to help confirm diagnosis before permanent neurological damage occurs. In conclusion, EEG is a method by which the electrical activity of the brain can be measured and imaged in traces. This has proved medically useful in the diagnosis of epilepsy, a neurological disorder.